Well, it's the start of a prototype for the Path of Exile Ice Ground. Hey, George here, and uh, yeah, this is where I'm currently at with this whole thing. What we have is prototype, so it's much rougher than the one we saw last week. Uh, this one hasn't been brought in ZBrush because I ended up with so many problems to put this stuff down. So here was, of course, the big one I did last week. And because I had so many problems actually trying to print all the smaller variations of this, and because they wouldn't glue together, I went back and redid the model and changed a lot of other things. So let's take a quick look at how all that stuff went down. So of course we're back in Maya again. Here's the original ice uh, sliver shard. And uh, I go ahead and bring that in. Oh, I get rid of that the ZBrush version. I bring back the old one that hadn't been um, refined. And I make some tweaks, make it a little bit shorter. I make it a little bit wider. And I pull out the back end to give me some more support when I'm printing. And now I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to interconnect all these things. And I'm, at this point, I'm getting a little bit lazy. And I want the easiest way possible. So I was thinking, okay, let's use a Bezier curve. Throw it in there, you know, mod it up, move it up and down. Use all those different control points to do that. And then uh, once I have something that I actually like, we're just going to extrude a surface across the entire thing. So of course here I'm trying to figure out some sort of a sinusoidal pattern. Now I'm playing around with just using a circle instead of a, a partial curve. And the final intent would be to just sort of run this through all of the other um, shards, the ice ice crystals. And uh, so here I'm just fixing things up, making sure it's even on both sides. I duplicate it, bring it up. I invert it in the Y axis, a negative Y scale. And by doing that, I get a flip flop of the entire thing. And now I'm just cleaning up, making sure everything was perfect. Here I'm extruding a NURBS curve across the entire surface. And uh, the, the normals for this, of course, inverted. So it's a black object instead of a naturally lit object. Next up, we're converting it over to a polygonal object. And we can see here, uh, I just take that polygonal object, flip it again, um, you know, across its Y axis to get the inverse of that shape, bring in the hidden ice shards. Now that I have everything together, I just start moving them in. And really what I'm trying to do here is come up with some way of 3D printing this thing and constructing it in a way that doesn't require a whole lot of work on my end. The more that I can print this thing as a solid piece, uh, the less I have to do in terms of fabrication and construction. So here I am just putting those last bits in there. You'll notice that actually I screwed up. I'm using the old ice shards. I'm not using the updated one, which is not as tall and not quite as narrow. So that actually does kind of bite me later on. So I need to mirror the entire thing over. So I slice my stuff up. I realized I screwed up and I used uh, booleans to, um, I, at first I was going to think I was going to somehow weave these things into the, uh, the actual ice shards, that is the helmet, but that failed. So I had to get rid of all that stuff. Finally, I'm ready to export this thing out, but before I need to do that, I actually need to slice it up into two pieces because I'm, I'm, my intent was to print it half and half, but then I realized that my 3D printer won't quite do that to scale and the one at work certainly won't either. So not only do I slice it in half um, because this is just a test piece, but I also slice it into quarters. Uh, now I've sliced this thing up into quarters, I am going in there and repairing all the different parts of it. I'm uh, uh, fusing or filling all the holes in there. And uh, once that's done, I'm going to do another slice right about here because it's just too tall and there's no way in heck my 3D printer is going to survive this whole thing. So now that the whole thing's been sliced up, I once again just fill the rest of the holes that are in there, make sure everything works right, and I'm going to export this thing out. Now this is me having already printed the entire thing. Now I'm doing some testing with the LEDs. I uh, start scavenging parts from other projects, testing to make sure the LEDs actually work. I'm not using the RGB LEDs this time. I'm just using some blue ones that I had on hand. Now I'm drilling all the different holes and I'm just doing some testing. I wanted to see whether or not the light was captured well enough by the object. So what, I'm, what I ended up doing was hot gluing the entire top of it to create a diffuser, a natural diffuser on the top. Um, I also get lazy and instead of drilling, I just use the hot end of the glue gun to push the way through so I can make a big enough hole for the LED to fit inside. Now I'm looking at this epoxy stuff. Uh, a few people had recommended using different kinds of epoxy. This one I happen to have in my basement already from a different project. It requires about four minutes of set time, I think it is. And then I just apply it to each of these. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking everything's all right. I'm really don't know what the hell I'm doing at this part, part but, um, oh, and then that's where it happens. The dreaded crash. Uh, um, yeah, uh, don't worry too much about it. It's going to happen about three or four more times uh, because that does have a gentle arc backwards. It, there's just no support to keep it up there. I really need to design some sort of a snap or a fastener that can print with this thing so I can just link these things together. 
Uh, yeah, that little one, the end piece isn't going on. I just kind of abandoned the last two because there's no chance in, there's just no chance of it sticking on there. All right, so now everything's kind of dried enough. It's been, uh, I think it was about 30 minutes it took before it really set. Now I am trying to figure out how I'm going to connect these two things together and still have the LEDs inside in a convenient way. Uh, I mean, now I've just completely abandoned the hot glue gun and now, now I'm just using a solder to basically expand those holes and make things a little bit easier for me to work with. So the idea is I'm going to shove one LED in the top, one LED in the bottom and have them branch out from the center. Here, of course, I'm just applying more hot glue. This time I'm not using my fingers because that burned a bit. And uh, there we are. You can see it up close. Once again, just using the uh, soldering iron to make a bigger hole for me. That worked out really well, although it ruined the hell out of the soldering iron. Um, good thing that's not my good one. That's just a crap one I bought at Radio Shack when they went out of business. So here we can see me trying to adjust these things. I'm really not happy with it. There's just not enough diffusion. I stupidly tried to squirt hot glue into it. Didn't work at all. Um, it was a bad idea and it would have been really bad because the whole print would have gotten warmed and probably started to fall apart. All right, so here we are. We're going to fuse the two halves of the crown together, the bottom and the top. So I'm just sticking them all in there. And uh, I'm going to need some assistance for this though in just a second because it's just, it's too difficult to hold it. So I just use some zip ties all around the edges of it to hold the thing together. And I leave it like that for about a day just to make sure. All right. So that was how I actually created this beginning prototype for the, uh, for the ice crown. So there's, there's a lot of problems with this. I'm, I'm not happy with it yet. Not at all. Uh, I mean, first of all, look at this crap right here. It's the, hopefully the end goal would be to take all this, um, of course, use wires that are, you know, white or blue. And uh, what I really wanted was the wires to be strung internally between these uh, sort of interwoven parts. But uh, uh, when I printed it, I had too many walls and I made this too thin. So that's something that's going to be refined. And then if I made that large enough, I could hopefully put all these different uh, wires internally and uh, with, you know, minimal holes, minimal cuts all over the place and get something that works out. But, you know, ultimately, it, it's not even the right size for my head yet. It's still too small. It barely fits my son. So, you know, this thing's got to be printed a lot larger. So it's, this is a design challenge, not so much a modeling challenge this time. So hopefully next week, what we're going to actually see is the uh, the final version of this where I have, or at least if it's not the final version, it's going to be pretty close. The, the, the prototyping will be done and I'll have the design down. Thanks everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. So if you enjoyed this and you enjoy seeing me create stuff, uh, consider t taking a look at Ventor's Gamble or maybe uh, the Chaos Orb, which is a big popular one. And then of course there's the Prophety Ma Prophecy, excuse me, Prophecy Mask. And then I'm doing something kind of stupid and dumb, but I'm, I'm playing it with a dice or a die and I'm rolling it to see what my skill tree is going to be, certain decisions in the game and so forth and so on. You know, if that sounds interesting to you, take a look down here.